Welcome to my channel guys. I have got something pretty exciting here today. It's the X220. This is the version 2. It was released a short time ago by Ichin. All of you Ichin fans out there know that the V1, which was bought out about three to four years ago, massively popular beginner's drone. So what we're going to do today is crack open the box, see what you guys get inside. Run over some text and specs of the 220. See what needs to be done in beta flight. And we're going to hook it up, not with the GoPro 7, 6 or 5 that uh, the mount allows for, but I'm actually going to use the new Firefly X Lite. Which is my preferred lightweight FPV camera at the moment. Check it out on my previous videos. I've done a couple of reviews and some demos of this cool little lightweight camera. Really, really nice piece of kit. Anyway, we'll put that aside. Let's crack open the box and see what we get inside. Thanks for stopping by. Let's see what we get. First off, we get some racing star tall NATO props. Here you get some stickers, small bag containing some screws, small bag containing some propeller nuts. Nice little right hand circular polarized as lollipop, table ties, spammer, some 3M spongy stuff, four 3M spongy landing pads. And this is the mount for the GoPro 4, 5, or 6. But like I said, I'm going to stick on my Firefly X Lite with the help of some padding behind it. We're out here, it's certainly jammed in there quite nicely. Okay. Wow, that is massively chunky. Have a look at it. I think I could probably run over this with my car and it would still be unbroken. That's terrific. Like I said, guys, this was first bought out about three to four years ago, the version one. What is different with this one? We've gone from the F3 to the F405 flight controllers. We've got some nice TPU protective bases on them at the bottom there which is pretty cool they all they look really really sturdy there's a nice frame around the actual motor itself looks like this thing is actually designed for beginners to crash 2205 for the version one now sporting the 2207 and we've jumped up from 2300 to 2550 kv motors so that should be pretty good jump from 20 amp escs to 30 amp and you can see the ECs are old school they are mounted on the arms which is kind of unusual to see in this day and age that's not really how we do things today however that will certainly keep down the costs and if you happen to blow an ESC these are super cheap and super easy to replace as well three stack VTX talking about the VTX we've gone from the um, I believe 200 milliwatt in the version 1 and this has been boosted to 600 milliwatts for our VTX camera which is running smart audio as well so that's pretty cool USB-C for our beta flight you can either buy this by itself or you can purchase it with a radio as well you still are going to need some sort of goggles to fly it but if you guys have your radio already then it's just a matter of purchasing one of these 220s and getting it up in the sky straight away. This is the receiverless version, so I do need to put on my TBS Crossfire. And luckily they also provide you and fit a nice little TPS mount on the rear here where our VTX antenna lives. That's pretty handy. Built like a brick you know what um yeah let's have a look at those arms yeah five millimeter arms that's incredible this thing looks like it's going to take a knock <laughs> or two uh, quite easily without doing too much damage two mil maybe two and a half mil for the upper and lower frame there i'll see how these motors go I have heard that, um, yeah, it is a beginner unit, so something with a bit more kick, such as 
perhaps some racer stars or even the original Toro 109 possibly a better job but we will see when we get this thing up in the sky so straight out of the box guys with no battery no GoPro mount no camera no props this thing weighs in at a whopping 373 grams So just by comparison, I'll put on a 109, which has props on, GPS, antenna, etc. And that's weighing in at 339. So, yeah, like I said, she's a fairly hefty unit, <laughs> that's for sure. XT60 here, which is really good. I'm going to run this on a 4S 1500 milliamp. So with the plug and play version, if you don't have a receiver, it each one kindly provide you with a receiver plug. So it's just a matter of hooking that up to your TBS, plugging it in, and away you go. Pretty straightforward, ground 5 volt and our S bus wire. Okay, reasonably straightforward, guys. So I'm just using a TBS Crossfire. I've got my 5 volt and my ground on the side here. And then I have done my RX and TX for my number 4 UART, which is just roughly to the center of that center stack. I've run a quick test with my radio and it seems to be paired and talking properly. So let's finish the build. Okay, beta plot time, let's plug in our USB-C. So there's not a great deal to do here, folks. Fairly straightforward. Just make sure you have your UART 4 to your serial RX. If you are connecting your TBS to uh, your UART 4. If not, yeah, make sure you put it to the correct UART. Uh, UART 5 config is auto-selected and the UART2 is being utilized for your VTX, which uh, has smart audio. That's all you need to do there. Down in configuration, I haven't touched any of these settings. Uh, 8K, 8K, Quad X, you've got your spin direction here. D-Shot 600, again, all of these settings are completely factory. All I need to do here was select serial base and crossfire i'm not selecting my rssi as i'm using the allocated channel on my tbs for my rssi make sure you have air mode on i think air mode is turned off by uh, factory settings so as this is a bit of a beginner quad make sure your air mode is on uh, you can select your tx and rx lost uh, if you are going to be likely to have a fall. Power and battery, haven't touched this. Fail safe, also I haven't touched it. Stage one. PID tuning, of course, don't need to touch that, leave that alone. Make sure your receiver is set up correctly here. Make sure everything is spinning as it should. That's all pretty good. My modes. These you'll need to set up, which is pretty straightforward if you've done it before. As this is a beginning unit, I've just got the um, angle, horizon, and beeper all set. Pretty straightforward to do. If you don't know how to do this, check out some of my other configuration videos for the Radio Master TX16. 
and you'll see what's going on. Adjustments, haven't touched it. Servos, again, haven't touched. Haven't touched the motors. However, I have made sure all of my motors are assigned to the correct channel and they're all spinning correctly, which is fairly important. On-screen display, I haven't touched this at all, so you can see it just comes with a couple of basic variables here, uh, low voltage, uh, angle, etc. Um, it does tell you which mode you're in, which is good. I probably won't have that on. I will just set up a couple of things here that help me out, as in flight time and my RSSI DVM. It tells me how my R tells me how my crossfire is going, which I think is fairly handy. So these you can just set up as you want guys, there's lots and lots of different things you can sit up here if you like. Another thing I like to put up is your temperature should you be sitting around for a while and you want to see if your flight controller or ESCs are getting too warm so that's a pretty cool thing to have on there but it's completely up to you. Video transmitter, like I said um, I'm using VTX Smart Audio so I have mine on race band 1. This Populates by itself, it's already set to 600 milliwatts of power, so really, really nice and easy to set up. Not much to do there at all. LED strip, play around with that if you like. And last but not least, if you're happy with how she flies, do yourself a favor, have a quick dump, and save all of your CLI settings. Always a good thing to do. And that's it in a nutshell, folks. Make sure, uh, last but not least, uh, everything is spinning correctly. I'll do a quick calibration now, which means sitting on a nice flat surface, pointing straight ahead. And we'll do a calibrate and a reset of our XY axes. And everything looks like it is spinning as it should. Excellent. Good to go, guys. Better flight in a nutshell. Super easy. If you want me to expand on any of these settings, drop me a message. I will certainly get back to you ASAP. Okay, back to the workbench. So be careful with your nuts guys, so black is back, so that's got the reverse thread on it for the front left and rear right, and silver is clockwise thread, rear left, front right. Don't get it wrong or you will mess up your threads, which means you will not be able to fly.